Okay, go away. All right. Um, Mer Ligay's open source antibiotics meeting on Tuesday, the 8th of August. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, let me just share my screen um, so we know what we're doing. One second. And then we can get started. So um, this is um, on the GitHub issue. This is issue number 101, um, which is here. And um, so, yeah, I updated a few things from last time, which I guess we're going to um, talk about again. So last time, Adrian gave us a, an overview of some of the most promising compounds that were identified as potential inhibitors from the enamine library. And he was halfway through looking, um, evaluating the IC50s of those. And um, we'd spoken a little bit about that and about um, some of the compounds that have been shipped to Warwick and the ongoing cc 4 car proposal, which is um, looking in great shape. Uh, but mostly it was about the evaluation in Warwick of the um, enamine compounds. So I guess um, if Adrian is not with us, then um, Laura, I was hoping to start with you, if you, if you were amenable to that, um, about anything you've been doing with, with compounds in terms of crystallization and such like. Well, um, Adrian, I think he's, he's going to come at some point, so he should be able. Right. Yeah. Um, in terms of crystals. All right. So we, we uh, I mentioned in the past that we had issues with the temperature in the room. Um, of the crystallization room, and that doesn't agree with the Mueller Gates project crystals. So we we thought it was again relatively stable. So I set up the experiments again, and the temperature went up more than six six degrees from what it's supposed to be. So all the crystals are gone. Wow. Um, yeah. Is yeah. So anyway, we've been talking with the managers, the building managers and things like that. So we are going to get an incubator so we can get at least this project going wow. because I can't be risking it every time I want to do something. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I couldn't do anything with the crystals that I had set up um, and I haven't set up anything until we had the, the incubator or until I know the crystal room is going to be stable for at least two weeks. So I put a temperature logger as well in the room so I can start recording everything that is happening during the day because we didn't have any temperature logging either. So we didn't know if over the weekend it was overheating and things like that. Um, yeah, so let, let's see how that goes. And I hope I can set up crystals before the incubator arrives because okay. yeah, I think it's September when it's arriving but I need the confirmation. Right. So these are soaking experiments rather than soaking and April is co-crystallizations also for soaking. Just... And I also had some uh, extra experiments that I had done in to try to do some soaking on crystals. Okay. So yeah, we'll have to redo that at some point. Okay. All right. But I've got protein, you know, I'm ready to go. I just don't have the facility at the moment. I also tried in a different room in the university. We have another crystallization room. But because of the changes in temperature aside, again, the room is not being stable. Mm. So, so the crystals can grow at different temperatures. The problem is that they have to stay at that temperature. If not, the crystals suffer. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that must be very distressing for you. Yeah, very, very frustrating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So for, I mean, the, obviously the crystallization things are the, are the most important. For, for any... Um, other evaluation of the of the compounds, like the variants of the uh, the atom wise and the enamine compounds, are we are they essentially in in the pipeline for biochemical evaluation, or or is SPR still happening or or, or possible? Well, for the SPR, they have to wait at least three months for getting the sensors. Uh -huh. So biochemistry is the one that we we have to follow up at the moment. So I know Edian. If I remember correctly, it has finished with those enamine IC fifties, mm -hmm. um, and he was doing some uh, the compass that you recently sent us this yeah. week. If I remember correctly, but let's see what he says if he comes over. But if not, that's that's what I think he's doing. Okay. Yeah, right. I gave him the compass the other day. So. <laughs> Great. Thank you. That's good. 
Um, and we, yeah, we, there was this res uh, residual question again that he can, um, maybe he can address, which was the, the um, IC54 U-Hangs amine compounds, but also Joe last time was mentioning about, you know, evaluating the original yes. A Z compounds that have been sent to check the, you know, you yeah, know, that was, that's also in the list, exactly. Okay. You right. have, right. yeah. And G way, sorry for my appreciation. Yeah. As well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Fine. So all of those cute. And I mean, but yeah, I mean, the pipeline then is is straight to biochemical inhibition, right? Rather yeah. Than... Biochemical inhibition rather than only binding. Yeah. And it will be with the full uh, system instead of with the apoplatin. Yeah. yeah. So it should okay. be more meaningful. Yeah. The the sensor thing for the SPR. I mean, that's that's what what is the sensor you're waiting for? Is how how do you attach the protein? It's an NTA sensor, NTA. Uh, and I do. I'm in coupling as well. Right. Uh, the problem is that they are having issues with the um, um, production of the sensors. Right. Uh, yeah, so they got a really a long waiting list basically, and obviously companies are um, prioritized or. Companies that are doing some uh, drug development and things like that, they're, they're being prioritized. Mm. Um, yeah. Right. Okay. Adrian is here. Oh, hi, Adrian. So, hi. yeah, I'm trying to get um, um, more information on the sensors uh, this week. So, you know, we have another backup. But again, the system will be an APO system. And we saw so there's not a lot of correlation between binding and inhibition. So I don't know how much we want to pursue that. But mm. I have inquired, um, I think it was on Friday, I inquired about new lead times and new quotes for the NTA sensors. Okay. Yeah, because the um, the SPR and we're, we're doing here and, the, and the, um, the stuff we're doing with a Creoptics Wave instrument, just like a fancy SPR, um, we've gotten chips for those because they're, they're strap Abaddon chips right so that's the that's the um the coupling mechanism right and you don't have protein with that on the end right you haven't got no biotin. i could do i could do recloning and get biotinylation on my protein i could mm. do that but it's better to to do um expression with a bio tag and then biotinylated tag instead of um doing the chemical bio biotinylation mm -hmm. yeah especially yeah. for sbr because then all the molecules will be in the same conformation yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just wondered if, about because uh, I'm not a I'm not a biochemist. I don't know how difficult it is, but if you if you look at how long that takes, how much effort it is versus waiting an yeah. amazing amount of time for these chips. I mean, three months is amazing, right? Well, the the essay sensors were even even longer. Mm. So you know, I was in a good point in terms of um and so I wasn't waiting for too much. Uh, C and fives are the ones that are the fastest ones to deliver. Right. CN5s, they always have some around. The problem with the CN5 chips is that you need to do amine coupling without any other way to attract the protein into the surface. Mm -hmm. uh, only the PI, uh, PA, changing the pH. And new ligases don't like <laughs> being uh, abruptly changed the pH. So, right. right. Yeah, at least when I tried it, it didn't go well. Okay. Yeah. We've had quite a lot of luck with um, a control compound versus. Um, the uh, well, a, a couple of different proteins that that consume ATP. We've had quite a lot of that with um, ATP per iodate as mm -hmm. a control compound. It's been quite useful. That I don't know how that would do on the Mer ligases as a as a potential SPR control as a potential binder. But wouldn't anyway. wouldn't that just completely completely um, modify the protein? Yeah, we're we're not sure. It, it seems to come off. So it seems to be reversible. So the aldehyde, yeah, the, the well, or the two aldehydes that are there seem to reversibly come, come back. So. It, it used to be a classic way of modifying tRNAs. Uh -huh. uh, so the terminal hydro, the terminal three and uh, three prime hydroxyls, uh, you modify with pyridate if you wanted to cleave, generate an aldehyde, and then use it for mapping where the tRNA bound on the protein. Mm. Right. It might depend on the environment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. sorry, I'm, uh, I might come to you in a moment, Adrian, for, for um, an update, but just, given that we're on crystallography, I was going to just switch over to, to Bart in case there are um, any updates from, from you, Bart, or, or from interactions with the, the guys at the University of Kansas. 
Yeah, so what we're working on right now, um, we sent Kansas the protein we had, which was mostly E. coli protein, which I think he's been talking to Laura about. Um, and we are having the same results that they had, which is basically, I think, uh, unbound structures. Uh, we have uh, more MRD um, currently being upscaled for both Acinetobacter and Pseudomonas. Um, and those are being upscaled and will be sent as soon as we get them done. I saw that they were upscaled last week. And so the purification should be going this week. And then we also have, uh, we started working on the mer e for both of the Acinetobacter and Pseudomonas, where we, uh, and pre, you know, we haven't had luck getting structures of those previously. So we are, um, we have some students this summer from Seattle Children's um, intern project that are, we have making uh, service mutants. So they're gonna, they're spending the summer doing site-directed mutagenesis and making uh, a bunch of different surface mutants for both MER-E's from Acinetobacter and Pseudomonas. And so then those will be upscaled through the pipeline and will come in over the next couple of months. Right, all right. And and you still have the JO6 compound for co-crystallization or something, is it? We have the JO6. Um, I don't remember what else, if you sent us anything else. Uh, no, only GO6 for now. So, so yeah, so I, I thought that there was the plan to send some of the the new hits that Adrian had identified. So what's the status of that? Uh, I didn't know we were going to send them to Bart as well. We but, talk, I think uh, we talked about, we talked about, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I did. I thought there was an exchange of emails about that, but maybe there wasn't. Also, if I could just make a request, which is don't send me anything. Send it directly to Scott. Harold will okay. get trapped, yeah. trapped in the, in the spider web here. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I did order the compounds from Adrian's the last compounds, the last hits. I ordered them for us. Um, they are still on the way. You ordered um, them from my catalog. From Minami, yeah. yeah. I got I got all the details if you want them, but. Uh, yes, we just have with them, um, we have to do something extra with the university, that's why they haven't arrived yet. So I don't know if Lori can do that again for you guys, because I don't know how long is it going to take for us to get but Probably if it, if they can be purchased and they're not like expensive, then just send us the catalog information. They are, they are not very expensive. I can send you, the, I can send you the, the table with the information. Yeah, that would be, Okay. that'd probably make everyone's life easier just to do it. Yeah. And if you have issues with that, but I can also do it. So whatever works. Okay. Can I, can I suggest can I can I suggest that Northeastern take the lead on this? And well, Laurie, can we work on this together and, and send stuff directly to Scott out of so we get make sure we get the right Z numbers and everything else for the compounds mm -hmm. that Adrian has identified? Yeah. I would, can we do that, please? Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to, um, although, although Bart was also, um, yeah, I can certainly do that. Well, I think Bart, I think the point here was Bart wants things sent directly to, to Scott. So I think we can just do that. We can order from, from by Northeastern to send things, you know, directly to Scott from any me. I think that oh. would be the simple, I think that would be the simplest thing to do. Probably quicker. Yeah. Okay. Can do. We, we will coordinate it between Laurie and I. Okay, sounds good. All right, great. So yeah, last time I think there were there were um, eleven compounds that were looking good, and Adrian, you were talking about five of them. And yeah, that's, that's others right. that you've got to look at. Did, were you able to update us on the other compounds, or? Well, I'm going to give you a quick verbal update. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, first of all, apologies for being late. Um, no I was mid experiment and lost track of time. Um. So essentially, uh, we've uh, we've had to sort of regenerate the stocks of substrates. So that's taken up a significant amount of time. So we're, we're now back up to speed with that. Uh, we're start, we've, we've started going through Way's compounds, or 46 of them. Um, I have um, one issue slightly. It's the amount of compound we've got. So if we're going to be screening at the similar concentrations, which is in the sort of 500 micromolar downwards range, 
um, we are going to have a limitation with volumes. So what I've been having to do is to basically reconfigure the assay to take into account adding things that are more dilute, which basically means adding more DMSO. So at the moment, we're just making sure that we can do that. So I actually did have a question that results from that, and that is, do you have a concentration range in mind for these particular compounds set? In other words, are you happy for us to go up that high, or would you rather we use a lower concentration range? Which will be easier, but will it be useful to know? Well, these are mostly derivatives of um, the you know original atomwise and uh, enamine compounds that were found to be multi-targeters. Yeah, we don't. They, they won't. They won't be strongly inhibiting. Uh, I wouldn't have thought. Um, so they're. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're rather like the ones you've seen already, where you're getting IC50s and the hundred micromolar range. I would have expected. You know, that would be that would be the best we'd, we'd hope for. Um, and and really, you know, the idea was to um, repeat whatever assay it was you did to identify the multi-targeting atomized compounds. Yeah. Okay. Right. That, that's fine. So, so now I know. Um, the other thing I was going to say was that we've also in the background, we've been doing other things. I, I did show a slide a few talks ago about a diadenosine compound, UP4A. Um, we've expanded that now. We've found, for example, that Pseudomonas murray is particularly sensitive to things like diadenosine compounds with a phosphate link between the two. Um, it seems to be a specific effect um, in that the other ligases are a lot less sensitive to that. Um, and out of well, curiosity, more than anything else, I'm looking at the other uh, binucleotides you can buy, so AP, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, to see if there's a range uh, where, because my logic is that it'd be interesting if we could get an inhibitor which bridged both nucleoside sites of a ligase, because, of course, they have two, the uridine site and um, the adenine site. So that's a work in progress, and I'll have data to report in the next meeting for that, as well as the, the, the other compounds. Great. All right. And the um, so last time you you were showing us the the um, uh, the, the, the IC fifty to five of the compounds uh, where, yeah. where you're showing the hill slopes and and the and the potencies, and and you said that there were another six compounds where you're digesting the data. Did you did you get anything from that? The, the compounds that we should be thinking about. Um, we're still at the number of compounds that we've got. I mean, the 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 rest of the data uh, looked like you had fairly high hill slopes, which suggested that there was a very complex mode of interaction between the protein and the inhibitor. Um, and to try and navigate a route down such a compound will probably be difficult because ideally you just want a nice single interaction to target as opposed to multiple ones. So at the moment, you basically are stuck with the ones that we've got. Okay. So these ones were the ones, I mean, particularly there was M17, M08 and A19 were looking interesting. Yeah, particularly MO8 there, and and there were there was another set of six you were thinking about doing. Has anything surpassed these? No. no. Okay. All right. So these remain the interesting ones, particularly the. Yeah. Yeah. So I got three frog crystals, and those are the ones that I will send. You know, I will talk to with uh, Laurie to send. Them. Uh -huh. Okay. These three M17, MO8, and A19. Yeah. Yeah. Right. All right. Great. Um. Okay, and I wasn't sure if these eleven are um, essentially the the best from the entire enamine library, the Warwick enamine collection, or is this a subset of more recent evaluations? Um, this I guess I was, yeah, I wasn't sure how much of the enamine set of six hundred or whatever it was has been evaluated like this. The entire thing. Okay. Again, so, well, yeah, only only against Pseudomonas mur D. Yeah, only against Pseudomonas. Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, I think that's. I mean, I, I think that's one of the points. I think again, I know you guys have done just so much work over the years. So, but I think 
in the ideal world, in the ideal world, obviously, I think we saw even with the original set, we saw, for example, combinations of mirror C and mirror E, right? Yeah. So, so in, in, in theory, you, you, in this case, you know, we're relying on pseudomonas mirror D as kind of our initial point, right? And so the question would be, you know, for example, mirror C, if you screen mirror C, the entire library against mirror C or mirror E, would you identify, you know, other possibilities that might be, for example, CE dual inhibitors? I mean, that's just a thought. I mean, again, whether you even have stocks to do that kind of analysis and time and all that, but um, just just as the point that these hits are basically coming from the screening of the full library against pseudomonas mirror D. I think we'd probably want to take a pragmatic approach initially but, and take the compounds that we've got and rescreen those against the other targets. Um, and then if that did look promising, then I think we would have to seriously consider basically going to the library again. Yeah, I mean, that's, of course, and I would say, I know it's just a matter of resources and whether you have this, you know, the stocks available to even do uh, another single point against, for example, mirror C or mirror E. But anyway, that's, that was just a point, I think, back to Matt. Um, these are the hits that have been triaged down, starting from the full screen of the enemy library against mirror D. Yeah. Um, and just to remind everyone, there was this idea of this nice experiment to see, repeat the assay in the presence of a file to see if the inhibition is impacted. And the reason for that was we were in interested in whether or not um, some of the compounds, particularly the most promising one, I think, which was MO8, was acting as a covalent inhibitor by reacting with a, a cysteine. Um, so that was the possibility of that, just to keep it on the, on the to-do list as a, as a possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, great. So if, is, if that's everything for the, the current evaluation of compounds, um, then I, I, I think that's everything. So yeah, the compounds that, that Yi Wei sent most recently, wait one second, I think I've just missed those. So uh, back down here. Okay, yeah, right, right, right. So so the, these are Yi Wei's, in Yi Wei's shipments, there were more compounds than this, but these are Yi Wei's compounds, yeah. um, which again are derivatives of one of the atom-wise hits. So yeah, for, for these compounds, for example, it's whatever led to the identification of AW53 as something of interest, you would you would just want to repeat that for these compounds where we're just playing around with the, with the structures a little bit. Um, in the case of the first round compounds, we're going to see solubility issues of, the kind that we're very familiar with, sadly. And in the second round, though, we're looking at more soluble compounds um, mm -hmm. in those cases, where we're trying to get rid of some rings and and yeah. so on. And and the kind of the really nice compounds were the ones that, that UA may not have time to finish because she's got a hand in pretty soon. Um, those are the ones on the bottom there, but they remain targets for us because they are predicted to be more soluble. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, you were just playing around with the structure that gave a nice result, which was this one. Yeah. Yep. Um, she, is, I think, you was handing in on the fifteenth a thesis, and she's giving a talk on it at the end of the month. So, yeah. anything in that kind of time frame would be very helpful for her to show that the compounds have have mm -hmm. uh, done something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and then just um, while I, Matt, I was going to say, Matt, yeah. Uh, yeah. isotins are horribly reactive. Uh huh. Yep. Down here. Yeah. So I, they react with all sorts of things. They are. Um, it's a, a cheap way of making the compound more soluble. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a, be yeah. a better a, a better log p, but um, we may it may hurt. Yeah, yeah. Is this is related to the fact they look a bit like maleamides? Some of them, anyway. Well, they're not, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you have that similar configuration of two carbonyls with an uh, amine in the middle. Yeah, yeah. This is amazing that this is even remotely possible to get this compound. It's it's a nice one. Yeah, um, and this is just a, a really simple way of trying to 
trying to deal with solubility a little bit. But that's an aniline. It's not going to be protonated. Uh, with this guy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 uh, yeah, H1 acceptor, right? Yeah, but really weak. I mean, it yeah. would be better off if you could move it out one carbon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Make I, it basic. I think, I think in that case, we've got, no, there's, there, there, there wasn't anything particularly good yeah. um, that was commercially available because we're, the, the starting point here is where the, the this CN bond is a, is a carbonyl. Yeah. That's the chemistry. Yeah. So it's not, uh, I don't think there was anything suitable for that, but. And also, if it's a if it's an unprotected amine, it, it it messes around with the chemistry you're trying to do. So you were just trying to use these as a kind of compromise. We shall see. Um, and then on just on the um, on Yu Hang's stuff. So yeah, he's his um, uh, he's uh, just still needs that one IC fifty of his amine compound to complete his table of results for 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 this work. Um, and then to to sort of publish the our attempts at improving accumulation, um, it's it's a set of compounds that have uh, the pyridiniums um, and guanidiniums on the side chains. Um, is a set of about nine compounds he's going to be making uh, just to sort of finish that work off. So to extend beyond just primary amines to more permanently charged things. Um, and then we're going to try and publish that work. So those are his initial targets. Uh, we're going to send you the draft of the CC4 car proposal, Joe. I said we were going to, I knew, I, you know, we were going to do that last time, but we didn't get around to it. So I'll send it to you ASAP. And um, and then uh, you hang when he's finished with those charge structures, is going to be uh, completing some of Yan Jensen's de novo predictions to see if we can get some data on those and then try and validate what Yan predicted. That's where he's up to. Mm -hmm. yeah. some interesting reagents here <laughs> yeah. okay all right um so that was what i think is going on here so you and you hang a, a, a busy making compounds or, or writing things up uh anyone who has not yet had a chance to talk who would like to raise anything um anyone else from uh any of you laurie or or bob I don't have anything specific to um, bring up at the moment. Um, I will say I connected with um, Adrian, Laura, and Chris offline by email about um, looking for some maybe analogs available of uh, some of the, the like the JO6, for example. Um, I my intention is to work with uh, Joe to get him to have a look at maybe. Um, so it doesn't look like there's anything commercially available that we could purchase and, and easily kind of use to generate SAR, but um, maybe what we could do is, is get a, an advanced intermediate and make a couple of modifications and, and things like that in the lab. Right. Um, that, that's kind of the plan. I just, I, I, it's happening just a little slower than I would like. Is there a plan to uh, resubmit the NIH proposal or not? Yes, 100%. Um, I'm actually also just sending you an email with uh, the the reviewer comments. So we got reviewer comments back. It did not get discussed at the NIH um, study section. Um, and so I, I was going to circulate that uh, so that you could have a look and, and then we could come up with a strategy on how to actually resubmit. Great. Good. Thank yeah. you. And in that regard, I'll be working with uh, Laurie over this next year in my first year of post-retirement to uh, to get some assistance and, and and comments for her resubmission and hopefully be able to um, supervise some of the uh, students that are going to be working with her. Um, I've mentioned that, I think, to, uh, to Matt uh, in, in email correspondence and hopefully we correlate, uh, coordinating those activities with what this group is doing. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, okay, good. Anything anyone else would like to raise? 
Yeah, sorry, I've long forgotten. So for the Adam Wise compounds, yeah. uh, you made some comment about them being dual targeting. Yeah. Was that based on biochemical or was that based on S SPR results? I just don't remember. That was the basis on, on assay data, enzym enzym enzymatic assay. Okay, I'll go back and dig up, look up the, the data somewhere in the in the in the GitHub section. Thank you. Yep. Uh, sorry, I can't find the link right now, but yes. Oh, don't worry about it. I I can I can find okay. it. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Um. Okay. I think that that's everything. All right. Well, good luck with your temperature issue out there yeah. or i hope we get it solved yeah yeah thanks. okay yeah best of luck all right uh thanks everyone else for coming along uh great to see you all and see you next bye. time bye then thank you bye, bye. 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 bye.